Come with me on a fabulous reading journey through 2020. Together we will explore a thought-provoking selection of 19th and 20th century classics. For each novel you will receive an illustrated monograph which will tell you intriguing stories about the author behind the book, explain its themes, tempt you with film versions to watch and challenge you with discussion questions. I love sharing my passion for great literature. Please consider joining me in this exciting literary exploration. We start the year in Bonnie, Scotland, with what is, in my view, the greatest Scottish novel ever, Robert Louis Stevenson's Kidnapped. Rich with Jacobite history, full of superb descriptions of landscape, this novel gives one of the best depictions of friendship I know. I'd rank Kidnapped in my list of 10 favourite novels of all time. Come and discover its treasures with me in January. February will bring you one of the world's favourite novels, The Hobbit, by J.R.R. Tolkien. Learn about the inspiration behind Bilbo Baggins and all his adventures. Find out about the hardships Tolkien endured before he became a writer, and enter the world of the Inklings and literary friendships in Oxford. Forbidden Love, in the aptly named New England town of Starkfield, forms the plot of Edith Wharton's memorable novella, Ethan Frome. The New York Times called the story compelling and haunting. Wharton was the first woman to win the Pulitzer Prize. In this work, she was critical of American society and morals and the restrictive lives of those in small rural communities. One of the fathers of science fiction, H.G. Wells was seen as forward-looking and prophetic. I'm not a huge science fiction fan, but I have always enjoyed The Invisible Man. Published in 1897, it mingles science and horror. Harry Potter loves to wrap himself in an invisibility cloak and disappear, but what if he could never reappear? This novel will make you realise that invisibility is no blessing. If your childhood did not include the tale of the elephant's child on the banks of the great grey-green greasy Limpopo River, all set about with fever trees, then it was a deprived one. Kipling's short story, told to his beloved daughter, who always insisted he tell it just so, is one of the greatest pieces of short fiction I know. Join me in May to discuss why it is so perfect. Few books make you experience the glories of the English countryside so intensely as Laurie Lee's Cider with Rosie. He grew up in Sladd in Gloucestershire and wrote the first book in his autobiographical trilogy about village life before the motor car and modern development changed that world for good. As you read this book, you drink the wine of wild orchards and flush like Rosie in the heat of a russet summer. In July, I'll take you back to the 18th century when the novel was just getting going as a literary form. Henry Fielding was a magistrate and playwright, and when fellow writer Samuel Richardson wrote a best-selling novel about a servant maid, Pamela, who marries her employer, Fielding felt that book was immoral. His response was to give Richardson's character a brother who nobly resists when his employer wants to take him into her bed. The result is the fabulous comic novel, Joseph Andrews. In August, we will be closer to home with Neville Shute's A Town Like Alice. Shute had just moved to Australia when he published this book in 1950. Do you know which Aussie town is the model for Will's town in the novel? What does Shute have to say about the position of women in that era? And how does he celebrate entrepreneurship and a sense of community? When the manuscript reader at a London publishing house started on Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre, he simply could not stop. He took it home, read during dinner, and stayed up until he'd finished the gripping story of feisty Jane and her love for Mr. Rochester. How much of this great classic is autobiographical? Which line most shocked the Victorians? Why has Jane Eyre continued to so delight generations of readers? Let's go travelling again in October with Graham Greene's hilarious travels with my aunt. 
Retired bank manager Henry Pulling is forced into crazy adventures with his eccentric and amoral Aunt Augusta. What crimes does she commit? What role does her black lover Wordsworth play? Share the enormous fun of this novel with me. Thackeray is today remembered for his great classic Vanity Fair, but he wrote many other works which are well worth discovering. Barry Lyndon is an Irish adventurer trying to make a success of life in aristocratic London. He's a rogue, swindler, liar and seducer of women. The Me Too movement was much needed for the likes of Barry Lyndon. Get to know Thackeray's intriguing, picaresque novel in November. Let's end the year with one of the masterpieces of Russian literature, Dr. Zhivago. Did you know that the manuscript had to be smuggled out of Russia and that Boris Pasternak was unable to attend the ceremony for the Nobel Prize he won? Visit the frozen wastes of Russia and experience the upheavals of revolution while reveling in the passion poetry and splendour of this stunning book. A classic, it has been said, is a book which has never finished saying what it has to say. I hope you will join me in 2020 in exploring some great works of literature and their authors, and that you will share my delight in reading this fabulous selection of books.